Welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 19th of February, 2021. On the news today, we start off with some international news from the UK and Australia. First and foremost, in the UK, if you are in the UK, please stop watching and follow the link in the description to sign the UK government and parliament petition aimed to grant specialized vape stores essential retail status, which would allow them to operate in a safe and controlled manner to stem the tide of ex-smokers going back to the devil that they know. We need this to help vapors regain access to the supplies that they need to stay away from tobacco smoking. Next, we have two stories from Australia. First up, the Australian Retailers Association cancels a secret contract with an agency who was found to be funded by Philip Morris International. Why is it that people have such disdain for tobacco, yet have no problem looking down on the single best way to give up tobacco? Anyway, the second story comes from the New South Wales Health, who is warning anyone selling nicotine e-cigarettes that they could face fines up to $1,100 per occurrence once they catch you. So if you're a retailer in Australia, stop selling nicotine because they're looking for someone to make an example out of. And I know you don't want to be their shining example of how prohibition never works. In the United States, word is finally starting to get out about the vape mail ban, and the results are a mixed bag. Online retailers are giving customers mixed responses. Some are just flat out denying any impact of the vape mail ban, like it doesn't even exist. While others are saying, they don't know yet. You know why they don't know yet? Because they're waiting on the post office to post something. Well, don't worry, folks. We'll take a look at the update from the post office. And it's time to start sending comments to the post office because the clock is ticking away very quickly. What are the other online vendors doing? Well, they're quietly having fire sales to clear the shelves before the deadline. Don't be surprised when the items available dries up at some of the online vape suppliers. And it's all because of the US vape mail ban. Oh, and the US vape mail ban isn't the only impact of the omnibus bill defying all vape products as a tobacco product. This also means that any existing laws pertaining to tobacco products will soon be imparted on anything related to vapes. Wait till the cannabis industry finds out about this shit. Well, the first one to do this is the U.S. Army. This story comes from Fort Lee, Virginia. The commanding general of Fort Lee, General Rodney D. Fogg of the Combined Armed Support Command, has signed new policy that restricts the use of electronic cigarettes slash vaping devices because they're now considered a tobacco product. Yeah. Violation of CASCOM policy 2101 will result in punitive action under the Uniform Code of Military Justice as a violation of a lawful order. Yeah. And the U.S. Army isn't the only one banning vapes and flavored tobacco products. West Hollywood Council voted unanimously to ban the sale of flavored tobacco products. Well, except for flavored tobacco that goes into hookahs, that's still going to be allowed. What? It gets worse. In West Virginia... Senate Bill 68 will increase taxes on e-liquids 1,300%. It's going to raise the taxes 
on e-liquids to a dollar per milliliter tax. So a 120 mil bottle is now going to cost you an extra $111, more than it costs now. And the entire price increase is all taxes. Well, since your head is spinning right now, let's wrap it up with an article titled, What are the advantages of vaping? And this is published by the University of Washington in their paper called The Daily. Well, ain't nothing to it but to get into it. All right, I already told you guys. If you're in the UK, click on the link in the description below and go sign this petition. If you're not in the UK, but you know somebody that lives in the UK, get a hold of them and ask them to sign this petition. I really like how petitions work in the UK. If this petition gets 10,000 signatures, which it's already up to 4,700, the government is going to respond to the petition explaining why or why not they're going to move forward on your petition. And if it reaches 100,000 signatures, they're actually required to debate it at Parliament. So, if you know somebody in the UK, send them this link and tell them to sign a petition. Because I really want to see the Parliament in the UK explain why vape stores are not considered essential retailers. Get fucked. Moving on, jumping down to Australia. The Australian Retailers Association cancels a secret tobacco contract. Whoops. Well, it really wasn't a secret contract. Well, technically not until uh, they discovered that there was a trail of where the money was coming from that led back to Philip Morris International. Here we had the Australian Retailers Association fighting for electronic cigarettes because it's a pathway away from smoking. But now, because they figured out, oh man, the guy that's you know funding this is tied to big tobacco, so we can't accept his money anymore. We, we can't possibly do any more of this advocacy and this legislation, you know, influencing because it's big tobacco. And we need to protect little Timmy and little Tina from the big tobacco companies that ruined our lives. Listen, big tobacco sucked me in too. And if they want to help promote electronic cigarettes, then by all means, start spending the money. Because you know who's going to end up winning in the end when electronic cigarettes are still available 50 years down the road? Big Tobacco. Because none of the small players are going to be left. They're all taking their money and spending it for advocacy so they can fight for their lives to stay in business. Well, Big Tobacco gets a big pass. They don't need to spend any money to legislate for the future. The future is vaping. Combustible tobacco will be a bygone era in the future. Eventually, it's going to go by the wayside. Disruptive technologies have that influence and that effect on society. And there isn't a damn thing you can do to stop it. It's going to happen. Vaping is not going to go away. You can limit it. You can regulate it. You can relegate it to the black market. It is not going away. It is a multi-billion dollar industry in every country that it exists in. You think it's just going to disappear and walk away? Well, the Australian Retailers Association says, oh no, that, that money came from Philip Morris. We don't want to be labeled as a big tobacco agency, so we're going to cancel this contract and we're no longer going to advocate for electronic cigarettes. 
Yeah. Here we have a story published in agp.com.au. Apparently there's a vaping crackdown in Australia because United States isn't the only one that's seizing contraband vape products. It's also happening in Australia. And the New South Wales Health has warned anyone selling nicotine e-cigarettes is going to face fines up to $1,100 per occurrence. And this warning comes after authorities seized $450,000 worth of illegal products last year. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, prohibition really works. It definitely stops people from doing what you don't want them to do, right? Oh no, that's where black markets come from. Wow, what fucking moron is in Congress going, hey man, if we just pass a law, it'll stop people from doing it. Yeah, because we're all high and mighty sitting up in our thrones in our parliamentary positions, in our elected positions in the Senate and in Congress. Members of Parliament need to realize what it's like to be a common man in society and realize just because something's illegal is not going to stop people from doing it. Especially when the health outcome of following the law is detrimental to your health. So if you're a retailer selling nicotine products in Australia, you better stop what you're doing because they're looking for you. And you're going to be the next example of how prohibition doesn't work. It just makes people criminals. Doesn't stop any behavior. Well, they don't know that in the United States. So they decided that they were going to make the online sales of electronic cigarettes illegal in the United States. And it's taking quite a while for people to actually go, oh, what, there's a vape mail ban? There's still people posting on Reddit today. I just looked before I started recording. There's still people posting going, there was a vape mail ban? I looked it up and I'm not seeing anything except from like back in 2016. Uh, I don't believe you. There's no such thing. Yes, there is such a thing. And yes, the deadline is approaching very quickly. We're more than halfway through February. FedEx will no longer accept any electronic cigarettes after March 1st. That's less than two weeks away. And if you're not watching this on the day it's released, it might be tomorrow or it might have been yesterday. So you missed out. It's not like people haven't been talking about this since December. Well, here we are once again, talking about the US vape mail ban. And somebody actually started a mega thread on the electronic cigarettes Reddit group for people to comment and list what the responses are that they're getting from their online vendors. River Supply. We're still working on alternative solutions, but unfortunately cannot provide any information at the moment. In other words, you know you're up shit creek and you don't know what you're doing about it, but you're not giving up, so you're going to keep digging and you'll find a way to stay in business because you're big enough you can do that. New nicotine. Well, the ban is going to affect all vape products, including the ones for DIY. We're working on a plan with alternative shippers to get our customers their products. However, the shipping time may increase. Just the time. You found people that are willing to drive to your customer's address and it's not gonna increase the cost. Oh, we're going to keep that one quiet until we know we've got a solution. Because why piss off our customers? When we may not even be in business. We don't know yet. Liquid Barn says, we are working hard to determine the impact of the recent legislation. At this time, it is too early to tell what the extent of this 
will have on future business. As we are updated with more information, we will begin to notify customers. Liquid Nicotine Wholesaler says the ban is written clearly enough that we will not be able to ship with the U.S. Postal Service and FedEx. We are currently in talks with other couriers to find a solution for the vape mail ban. We do not have any plans on shutting our doors. We will reach out to all of our customers once we know more. Bull City Flavors. We've been officially cleared by the FedEx legal team and don't anticipate any issues with the Postal Service or UPS because they sell flavors that you can take and put into your DIY e-liquid or you could put it in your cupcake or your muffin mix or your pancake batter or your candles. So they're not going anywhere and they're not worried about this until somebody decides that they want to be a dick and turn them in for selling stuff for e-liquid that's a tobacco product. And then there's going to be an investigation and they're going to get in legal dispute is just utterly ridiculous. The law was written so clearly that anything could technically qualify as a tobacco product. So like if I were to take this water bottle and I were to use it like, you know, the marijuana people take and they run their shit through water to make their little bongs or whatever the hell they are. This would be a tobacco product banned from shipping in the United States Postal Service because the wording on it just was aimed at catching whatever they could possibly catch and lump into the group as a tobacco product. And the cannabis industry is just now starting to catch on to the fact that this is going to affect them too. And they're having the same mixed bag response. Some people are just flat out denying it. And other people are like, well, we'll find a way around it. Anyway, take a look at the link in the description below and you can follow up on the US vape mail ban to see what the status of your online supplier is. If it's listed below, if it's not, contact them and leave a post so that everybody can be informed about what the effects of this are going to be before it actually happens. So that people actually have a chance to prepare that haven't already been stocking up. And we talked about last week about how the convenience store industry is scared shitless because of the changes made and how now the PACT Act is going to be enforced. And they were following the law before, so they really shouldn't be too worried about it. Except they are. Because before, they were just going through the normal procedures and documenting things in their logs and everything was hunky-dory. But now, come September of this year, will be one year past the PMTA deadline. And that means that technically some of the cigars and the tobacco products that they're selling are technically going to be considered illegal because they don't have a marketing order in the United States of America. So now they're scared shitless too, going, we got to get rid of the jewels, we got to get rid of this, we got to get rid of that. How many of the things, the hundreds of tobacco products that we have on the wall behind the counter are going to disappear? We don't know because the FDA hasn't done anything about it yet. The deadline was in September, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. We still don't have a list of what tobacco products we're given an exemption. What tobacco products that filed a PMTA have a substantial equivalent classification 
And which ones are going to have to follow through with all the steps of the PMTA application process for the paperwork and the documentation and the verification of all the lab findings to classify it whether it's allowed to be sailed in this country or not. Well, they've been making some noise. I'm not the only one banging the drum every week on what's the FDA doing? Is the FDA doing anything? Is there something going on? Is there, it, what, Something's got to happen here. We can't have September show up and then all of a sudden everything's illegal because the extension was only for one year. FDA has one year to complete all those applications. Do you, do you think they're going to get them done? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of people that spend a lot of money and come September, they're gonna be faced with, do we pull our product off the shelves until the FDA gets around to us? Or are we gonna continue selling things illegally and risk fines and penalties and bankruptcy? I don't, wow. We're going to have to make a hard choice, aren't we? Well, the consumer industry, the convenience store industry, they're not sticking around and waiting. They need to make changes and it takes time to make changes and changes cost money. So the earlier you can plan out a change, the more cost effective that change is going to be compared to making changes overnight and then risk violating the law because you missed something stupid. They've been banging the drums and they're like, where's our update? We wanna know what the hell is gonna be legal and what's not gonna be legal. Well, the FDA finally got around to putting out an update, except there's a little problem, okay? The substantial equivalent request, the FDA received 6,800 products from 100 companies and they processed those. Those are processed. There's a list available. Yeah. Exemption requests, meaning that they should have been grandfathered because they were on the market beforehand. Uh, there's 350 products from 15 companies. FDA got around to doing that. How about the PMTA? The pre-market tobacco applications that they got, you know, and some of them were submitted on a CD, actually a stack of CDs, because they're all digital. Some of them were actually printed out and showed up in pallets of boxes of documentation. Some of them were mixed. There's 4.8 million products that submitted a PMTA to the FDA. And it came from 230 companies. There only 230 companies that submitted PMTAs. Well, that's a bit of a problem. How many companies didn't submit a PMTA? How many companies have never followed the law and they're just a little corner store mixing up their own juice in the back room, selling it to the local area. They never submitted any paperwork to anybody Aww. other than their municipal city business license that they had to have. Is the FDA ever going to find them or catch up to them? Or did only the people that submitted the applications and spent the money, or are they the only ones that are gonna get screwed in this process? Whoops. Time will tell. But we at least have something from the FDA. 230 companies submitted applications covering 4.8 million products. <laughs> yeah. It says the size, complexity, and diversity of the PMTA submissions posed additional challenges to the FDA. 
One firm, for example, submitted information on more than 4 million products in a single submission. Mm -hmm. Talk about a mega application. Kind of like, you know, if somebody decided they were going to create a database for all the small businesses that wanted to file a PMTA but couldn't figure out how to do it. So they gave them a website that they could go to and they could punch in all their information about what products they sell and what ingredients were in them and fill out their portion of it. And then that was coagulated into one ginormous PMTA application submitted as a, oh, I don't know, mega conglomerate organization, uh, umbrella policy type deal, an umbrella business, maybe. Well, there's progress. Take out, check out the links in the description. Now, going back to the post office. Get fucked. It was published yesterday. Actually, the PDF was published yesterday. The website is updated in the evening. At least that's when I caught around to it. But... The post office did publish what their stance is so far on the U.S. vape mail ban. Proposal for revision and an invitation to comment. Because in this proposal, in this thing, they came to realize, hmm, electronic nicotine delivery systems are subject to multiple laws under multiple statutes of the U.S. Code. And technically, if the FDA approves this as a tobacco cessation product, then technically they can't ban the shipment of it in the mail. And they know that that's going to happen at some point in time. So they want to write the rules and the registrations and the regulations in a way that they can do it once and not have to come back to it later. They know that this is used to quit smoking. And they know that there's going to be a situation in the future when somebody, let's say a doctor, writes a prescription for you to go to a online pharmacy and order your electronic nicotine delivery system which one law declines as a, defines as a tobacco product, but if the FDA classifies it as a smoking cessation tool, well, then they can't ban it. They have to ship it. Little conundrum, don't you think? Feel bad for them, don't you? Regardless, there are exceptions in here. They also have a problem with the fact that this and this and this and this and this and this, they're all different sizes. So they can't like say that it, they can't write the, regis the legislation to say it can't be bigger than this or bigger than this or bigger than this or weigh more than this or be this exact size and weigh this exact much because those are automatic flags for, oh, that has to be a tobacco product. 10 cartons of cigarettes is exactly the same size and weighs exactly the same amount. And if you take a look at 100s, Cigarettes that are 100s, and you take a look at regulars, they weigh the same. And it's not by accident. 100s are skinnier and longer, but they have the same amount of tobacco in them. The variance is in the filtration, because some of the filters actually have little charcoal in them. Some of them are just sponges. But they can set up a scale that goes, if it weighs from this much to this much, and it's this size and this size, they know it's got to be more than likely a tobacco product. 
They can't do that with vaping stuff because it's all different sizes and shapes and volumes and concentrations. This is just liquid. And if you change the label on it, you could sell it as hand sanitizer. Oh, wait a minute. The vaping industry did that when COVID hit. They started making hand sanitizer because they already had the bottles and they already had the vegetable glycerin. And all they had to do was substitute nicotine for alcohol Substitute the nicotine and the flavorings for alcohol, and now you have hand sanitizer. Wow. What's the, how, how, how are they going to tell the difference when they scan a package when it's this and this? I mean, you would literally have to open every single one to find out which one is hand sanitizer and which one is e-liquid. And they don't know how they can enforce the law because... This is a disruptive technology and it's disrupting their process and they know that it is and they're confused. They, they're asking for people to comment and tell them how they could possibly enforce this rule. To facilitate understanding by readers not versed in the statute, we propose to treat ends as a standalone category albeit one generally subject to the same restrictions and exceptions as cigarettes, consistent with the statute. Well, take a look at the actual link in the description below and see if you can make heads or tails of what the post office is doing. Let's move on. Look at the FDA. Here we have a nice, beautiful picture compiled by the FDA. Products accepted for review. 500 pipe products, 525 water pipe products, 27 other products, 74 cigarette products, 25 roll your own products, and 12 smokeless products. Mm-hmm. 58,041 ENDS products have been accepted for review so far. Take a look at the link description below if you want to uh, actually dive down into what the FDA has actually put out. Time to move on. This, this news report's already going to be way too long. How about the United States military is already going? All right, man. Everything that's vape or electronic cigarette related is now tobacco product. So we got to start doing something about it now because in the military, we're all about readiness, being prepared, knowing what our adversaries are before we actually have to deal with them. Well... General Rodney D. Fogg at Fort Lee, the commanding general, explains why this measure had to be enacted today. The Army recognizes that the use of tobacco products harms readiness by impairing physical fitness and increasing illness, absenteeism, premature death, and health care costs. Readiness is enhanced by promoting the standard of a tobacco-free environment that supports abstinence and discourages use. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, Mr. General. This is a tobacco cessation product. This is the off-ramp from the tobacco highway. If you lump this in with tobacco, you're falling into the same do or die classification system that is causing people to stay with combustible tobacco. You need to provide the off ramp from the tobacco highway. That's what electronic cigarettes are. 
then you don't give a shit because you signed this document making it considered a lawful order. <coughs> and the policy even warns that violations of those in uniform could result in punitive action under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. <coughs> Follow the rules of CASCOM Policy 2101 or face punitive actions up to and including discharge. Have a nice day. Yeah? And you think that this is where it's going to stop? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, some people don't know about all this stuff that's going on. So they're still marching forward with their agenda. West Hollywood. Yeah. The City Council of West Hollywood has now banned the sale of flavored tobacco products. No flavored tobacco products. Uh, except if you plan on putting it into a hookah. So, because we don't want to piss off the Middle Eastern people in West Hollywood. We have to be politically correct and acknowledge that there may be some religious implications of banning them from using their hookah. And hookahs don't use regular tobacco. They all use flavored tobacco. So we're gonna ban the sale of flavored tobacco products, but we're gonna make an exception so that we don't upset the political continuum that got us into office. Yeah. Published in the Los Angeles Times, we have an article here titled, West Hollywood Bans the Sale of Most Flavored Products. And if you read down through it, you'll come to find out even the mayor. Uh, I don't even want to talk about it. Take a look in the link description if you want to read more about this. Because I got one that's going to piss you off even more. How about the poorest state in all the United States? is now going to do the same do or die attitude. And if you're a vapor in West Virginia, this is a fate worse than banning the product. What did they do? Tax the fuck out of it. See, they already have a tax on the liquids. 7.5 cents per milliliter. And even Ohio has a tax on nicotine containing e liquid. So the smart shops and vendors will buy zero milligram e liquid. And then they're gonna sell you a little capsule that has two or three milliliters in it that contains all the nicotine. So all you need to do when you go home is, kind of like they do in Australia, you'll buy the zero milligram juice, you'll pop the cap on it, and then you add your nicotine into it. Well, in Ohio they do that so that they can skirt the stupid taxes because face it nobody wants to pay taxes if they don't have to if there's a legal way to skirt around the law you're gonna do it well here we go west virginia you're in the same freaking boat so you're gonna be seeing a very common product showing up in vape shops in west virginia it's the little sapphire packets they kind of look like an alcohol packet or a packet you have to, you know, clean your glasses. Except inside there, it gives a capsule and inside the capsule is probably 100 or 250 milligram nicotine. And you take one or two of those and squirt it into your bottle to nick it up. Because there's no way in hell anybody 
is going to take a $30 bottle, which is what this would sell for in the vape shop, and pay $150 for that same bottle after this bill goes into law. That is just utterly ridiculous. But see, this is the regulations that companies like Juul want to have happen. Because if they do that, then all you're left with is little tiny pod systems that only contain two milliliters or three milliliters of juice. Because that pod now costs you three bucks in taxes, plus the actual cost of the pod. That's what they would like to have happen. Open tank systems? No, no, we don't want those. Well, we're not gonna ban them. We'll just make it so expensive for your liquid. Cause we don't know that you can mix it up at home. We'll just make it so expensive for you to buy commercially prepared safe, regulated, tested e-liquid. We're gonna force people to make their own. And if they get it wrong because they're stupid, well, that'll be the next headline and the next reason for us to ban something else. Gotta love the fear mongering. Works great. Gets people like me into a big rant. Gets me standing up making me look like a freaking idiot. Oh man, look at him. He's all excited. He's just yelling and screaming all the time. What is wrong with him? Yeah. Let's move on. How about here we have a publication. It's the Daily from the University of Washington. And something else I've kind of caught on to is a lot of these places that you go to online don't have anybody on staff that actually writes all the articles. You got one guy that decides to open up a website and he happened to write one article that got him lots of views, lots of hits, and he made a lot of money off of it. So then he took that money and he dumped it into keeping the website going. And the more content you have, the more likelihood somebody's going to come to your website, the more page clicks you have, the more ad revenue you make, so forth and so on. But the cheap bastard doesn't want to actually pay anybody to write articles. And that's okay. Because there's plenty of companies out there that write articles and then sell them to a bunch of people. And they'll even give you an exclusive contract, so they'll take an article that's written rewrite it so that the wording is different, but the content is the same, even give it a new title and give you exclusive rights to it. But the exact same article shows up all over the freaking place. And not to be derogatory because that's what this is, but there's a lot of Indian companies that do this because all the tech sector jobs went over to India mm. and there's a lot of people over there that got the experience of the tech sector jobs and decided, you know what? They're gonna go into business for themselves. They realized how easy it was to make money as long as you have the right contacts. So they start writing and publishing articles. Kind of like this one here. And they even have it less listed and as specified as branded content because the content comes from EMIAC technologies. But it is content nonetheless, and it is published by the University of Washington. How about new? Whether they actually have an affiliation with the university or not, that's for you to decide. Nope. In this world of fake news that we live in. Oh, Jesus. Wonder where it comes oh, from. Oh, that's not good. No, no, Comes no. from people trying to be rich and not caring about the impact that their content has on society. They're only selfish bastards and worried about making money. So let's read this article. How do I always end up in this ranty mood? Whoops. So no wonder nobody watches my news reports. Anyway, 
The bygone year, if not anything, has taught us one thing that being healthy can take you a long way. That is not written in proper English. That is definitely somebody that either has English as a second language or they took and they wrote the article in their native language and then just had something like Google Translate translate it for you. Whatever. It is time that you take the reins of your life in your hands and decide whether you want a healthy life or not. Does this sound familiar? I come across this article that said the same kind of wording, and that was written in like a sixth grade level. Ah, uh, this one's more like, you know, an eighth or maybe a tenth grade level, depending on what part of the country you're in. Anyway, let's boil it down to what are the advantages of vaping? Well, it's cheaper. As long as you don't live in West Virginia and you have to pay $120 a bottle of tax on something that costs the manufacturer of that bottle less than five bucks to make. Relatively safer, yes. Public Health England has stated numerous times in multiple publications that vaping is at least 95% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. And there's other studies out there that say it's closer to 80, 97 or 98%. And if you only look at the cancer rates, you'll find that vaping only exhibits a 1% increase in cancer risk compared to never smokers. Fewer after effects. Oh, this is a beautiful title. This means that your clothes don't stink anymore like tobacco, like smoking cigarettes. Worst case scenario, if you can even tell on a person, I mean, you'd have to get really close, really close to them to find out that they smell like ooh, vanilla. Yeah. And there's more variety with vaping. Another factor you should consider vaping over smoking is that the former offers you a wide variety of flavors to try. Well, not if they ban all flavors except for tobacco and menthol. It is a much better experience than smoking cigarettes for you and the people nearby you. And I 100% agree with that statement. I even agree even more with the next one. It helps you quit smoking. There's a study out there that says electronic cigarettes are five times more likely to enable a smoker to stop smoking than any other the medications or other nicotine replacement therapy products on the market. Five times more likely. But they're still trying to ban it and tax the fuck out of it and blast it out of existence. Well, I'm here to tell you, it is not going to work. We are not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. And my message to you is always, keep on vaping. And thanks for watching.